inequality between places matters to people. Polling shows that, across the political spectrum, inequalities between deprived and better off areas are considered among the most concerning forms of inequality in Britain. These concerns are currently high on the political agenda. Under Boris Johnson, the Conservatives have made levelling up a central goal. How geographically unequal is the UK from an economic point of view? There are large and persistent differences in employment and pay across regions in the UK. In 2019, average wages in London were £21 an hour, 60% higher than the £13 an hour paid in Scarborough and Grimsby. Employment rates ranged from a low of 66% in Skegness and Luth to 90% in Harrogate. There are a small number of places with very high wages. Areas such as London, Reading, Slough, Heathrow and Milton Keynes have average wages far higher than the rest of the country. But this doesn't mean that everyone in these areas earns a high wage. The average is driven up by those right at the top. In 2019, the top 10% of earners in London earned £37 an hour on average, over 80% more than the £20 an hour paid to the top 10% of earners in Scarborough. In contrast, the wages of the bottom 10% of earners were similar everywhere across the country, at around £8 to £9 an hour. Because of this, wage inequality is much larger within rich areas than within poor areas. Places with higher average wages tend to be more expensive places to live. This can mean that differences in wages do not necessarily translate into differences in living standards. The combination of low wages at the bottom and high housing costs means that poverty rates after housing costs are actually higher in London than the rest of the country. Geographical differences in well-being are smaller than the differences in labour market outcomes and people in higher paid places are no happier than those in lower paid places. So why are there big differences in average wages across areas? Differences in skills play a key role in explaining these gaps. For example, 55% of adults in Brighton have a degree, compared to just 15% of adults in Doncaster. Places with more graduates have higher wages. The share of graduates in an area alone explains nearly half of the variation in average wages. So what explains the differences in skills around the country? It's partly because children growing up in different places have different levels of educational attainment. For example, fewer than one in five children who grow up in Grimsby go on to get a degree, compared to one in three children who grow up in London. But brain drain from poorer communities exacerbates these differences. Skilled people from poor areas move to other areas where there's more demand for their skills. By age 27, half of the graduates who grew up in Grimsby have moved away. Many moved to London. Cities like Brighton, Bristol and Leeds are also popular destinations. The advantages of high-performing places are self-reinforcing. High-skilled people move to places with good jobs, making these places more productive and attractive to good employers. Economists call this agglomeration. One of the main goals of the government's levelling up strategy is to spread opportunities across the UK so that young people don't have to leave their hometowns to succeed. It also aims to boost skills in left-behind places. To have the most powerful effects, it's probably necessary to find ways of boosting skills and creating good jobs at the same time in less well-performing areas. If you just improve educational attainment without creating high-skilled jobs, skilled people will simply move elsewhere. But if you just create jobs without boosting skills, high-skilled people from elsewhere will move in, not necessarily benefiting local residents. The government must also be careful that levelling up policies don't just benefit high-skilled workers. As we see in London, while there are many high-skill, high-wage jobs, this also results in higher housing costs, limiting the benefits of living in a prosperous area for low-paid workers. Just as seen in London, a Northern Powerhouse or Midlands engine may do little to improve living standards for low-skilled workers who live there. A more equal spread of graduates will help reduce spatial disparities and may even improve the overall performance of the economy, but it is no simple fix for improving outcomes for low-skilled workers wherever they live. This research is part of the IFS Deaton Review, a multidisciplinary review of inequalities funded by the Nuffield Foundation. To read more of our research, visit www.ifs.org.uk forward slash inequality.